guys, welcome to the youth service. Hope you're all doing well and staying safe during this time. We're going to start off in prayer and then feel free to join us while we worship. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to share our worship with the church today. Please bless everyone that will be listening and allow everyone to learn something new and put everything into action from the teaching today. In Jesus' name, Amen.
everyone um happy sunday hope you guys have had a great week so far um welcome to church so today i'm going to be speaking about daniel chapter 6 which is the story of daniel in the lion's den so i believe everyone knows this story from when we were kids you know sunday school um but i feel like as we've grown older this story has like a different meaning a completely different meaning and um, it had a completely different meaning for me as well and so that's something that i would like to go over so if you just prepare daniel chapter six and um we can pray first and then we'll go into the word dear lord thank you for this day um thank you that we're all safe and sound lord jesus i just us that through this word we're able to understand you more understand who you are lord i pray that we're able to see an old story that we've once known and to see it in a different light lord um and i just pray that you convict our hearts i pray that you convict the hearts of everyone that's watching this video today lord um and people that may be watching it afterwards and i just pray that you allow me to present this the way that you want to present it and i pray that you will be done in all of our lives in jesus name i pray amen so if everyone gets out down to chapter six um we'll read and then we'll stop and then i'll just go through the separate things so let's start at daniel chapter six verse one so it says darius the medi decided to divide the kingdom into 120 provinces and he appointed a high officer to rule over each province the king also chose daniel and two other administrators to supervise the high officers and protect the king's interests Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the other administrators and high officers. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. Um, so even with this, I feel like just understanding that Dan because of Daniel's great ability within himself, he was able to elevate. Um, it just shows us his character who he was he was confident he was a very confident person he was outgoing he stepped out he said i'm gonna show you guys like what i'm made of so i felt like that was very interested um just to understand who daniel was and his characteristics so if we continue verse four it says then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way daniel was handling government affairs but they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn he was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. So they concluded our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel would be in connection with the rules of his religion. So from this, we can see the difference between the character of Daniel and the character of these officers and the high, um, high officers and the administrators. So I've written down the character of these people. So their character, they're very envious, they're jealous. Um, they have no patience to grow and elevate in their own by their own strength. Um, all they're trying to do is get into a position by their own power, into a higher position. They have no sense of humility. They've been given a role. Um, they've been given a role as administrators and high officers, right? But they have no humility. They're not humbling themselves to work in which they've, to work at the place that they've been given, if that makes sense. So once a person is in a position and they're trying to get to the top they have no sense of humility they want to get to the top by any means necessary and i feel like this is what spoke to me because they have no patience they have no um they don't want to see other people win that life i guess and i feel like i definitely know people like that i definitely have seen people like that i'm sure people know other people like that as well um and i just pray that we don't become them people too I feel like in the Bible, everyone want, everyone wants to be a Daniel, everyone wants to be a David, everyone wants to be the great. But at the same time, there's also people in this life that are the officials, that are the administrators, that are going to go and be against another person. And just because we're Christian, it doesn't mean that we're exempt from behaving in them ways. So I feel like that would ideally be my first point, is to make sure that we don't allow envy or jealousy to linger in our hearts. Um, because then that's just the way for the enemy to get through us um, to try and take other people down. Okay, so let's continue reading. I think I stopped at five. So they concluded our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel would be in connection with the rules of his religion. 
And I just found that amazing because it's like, they couldn't find anything within Daniel. And what that said to me was, is when you're in true relationship with Christ, when you're, when you truly, <clears throat> when you truly know Christ, when you truly know God and you're obedient to God, people can't find a fault in you. Um, the only thing they'll come to attack is your faith. But in all seriousness, they, they can't come and find a fault because being obedient to Christ means that you're also obedient to things of the earth. So if I give an example, uh, if you if you're working, you're obedient. You have to be on time. You have to do what your manager says. Um, if you're in university or school, you have to you have to work hard to do the, to get the grades that you need to get. You need to study. You need to do this and that. Like God doesn't like lazy. So being obedient in Christ, being obedient to God, just as Daniel was, um, also allowed him to gain the respect and to elevate within the world, within the king, within Babylon. And I also feel like the reason why they were attacking Daniel and coming for his faith is because they couldn't access the favor that God had upon Daniel's life. So when they see that, when they see the favor that God has upon Daniel's life, they also want that too, but they know that they can't access it because they don't serve the same God. They don't serve the God that Daniel, um, that Daniel serves. So they come to attack. They come to attack what they can't access ideally and i feel like that's generally what would happen in this life so i think we should just stand firm no i think i know we have to stand firm and i think another reason why they came to attack daniel's religion and his faith is because they know that this is the one thing daniel will never waver he will never bow down to any other king um if you guys have read the other chapters of daniel you see like he doesn't bow down to anyone except god and I think he's just such a great example for us. He will never waver. He will never um, bend over backwards for someone else. And I feel like they understood that and they just came to attack that. So yeah, just a word of encouragement. Never ever bend over backwards, never fold under pressure. Okay, let's continue reading. So verse six says, so the, admi so the administrators and high officers went to the king and said, long live King Darius. We are all in agreement, we administrators, officials, high officers, advisors and governors that the king should make a law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders for that the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. And now, your majesty, issue, a sign, issue and sign this law so it cannot be changed, an official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked. So King Darius signed the law. So what these officials have done now is they've all come together, they've plotted together, they've discussed. And what they're thinking now is how can we take Daniel down? That was the first thing that they thought. And then the second thing was how should we present it to the king so that he will say yes, right? So what they've done is they've told the king if anyone worships as, as someone that's divine or human, except for you, meaning that gives him the glory, that will make him feel like he's in charge, that will make him feel like he is above all and he's, he's the one that made the decision. They made him feel like he made the decision for himself um, and they presented it to him in such way that he won't say no because if he says no, he's taken away the power, he's taken away his power to rule his kingdom, ideally, right? So the way they came in was so cheeky and they thought of every little detail to kill Daniel. So basically these men were deceptive people. They were, they were very deceptive. They were trying to do it in a snaky way. Um, and they're just, they're, 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 their hearts were not pure. Their, their intentions were not pure. Um, and so this whole form of deception and tricking people reminded me of in the Garden of Eden um, when the devil tricked Eve to eat the apple and so if I read it for you guys it's Genesis chapter 3 verse 4 and it says you will not certainly die the serpent said to the woman um, and it was like the devil was reading her future if I read my notes it says the devil was telling Eve her future as if he even knew her future and I believe he did that because he didn't like the position that he was in. He wanted to be elevated and to be on God's level and to be in closer relationship with God. Um, and I think this relates to the men because they wanted to come for Daniel because they didn't like the position that they were in. They also wanted to be in close relationship with the king. They wanted to be in a higher position. So I think this 
form of like being hungry for power is so dangerous because it can end up in killing people it can end up in like these men wanted to kill daniel um and even with the snake in the garden he knew what was coming for him so he tried to deceive um, and he succeeded with eve but this is what the devil will do he will try to deceive us to think that we can be like god to think that we can be greater um because he can't because he can't he can't have the he can't have the relationship that we have with christ the devil knows that we're made in the image of christ um and he is very envious of that and so he will try and get us in any way shape or form so he may not come as a snake in the 21st century but he can come in the form of a man he can come in the form of a woman he can come in the form of your friends he can come in any type of way um to deceive you and you just have to have the full armor of god on you because the devil will come at any point any given time he's not gonna tell you right tomorrow morning i'm gonna come and attack you he's coming whenever he wants so you have to stay prepared um and if we just go to genesis verse three verse uh chapter three verse six it also says when the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye so it's just exactly how the men came to the king and they presented him with something that was pleasing to his eye he liked the fact that people will worship him because of this new law so it's just the devil was scheming so we have to stay so vigilant um, and so attentive and just be in the word of god 24 7 because the attack is is coming <laughs> um so yeah if we just continue to read i think i stopped at verse 10 so if we read from verse 10 so it says but when daniel learned that the law had been signed he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with its windows open toward jerusalem he prayed three times a day just as he had gone just as he has always done giving thanks to his god then the officials went together to daniel's house and found him praying and asking for god's help so this verse verse 10 um it just shows us that the first thing that we should do when we're presented with something, when an attack comes, is we need to go do what God told us to do when, when an attack comes, is pray. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So as soon as Daniel, it says, but when Daniel learned that the law was signed, he just went straight into his room and prayed. And so it's just so amazing to see that his first reaction, his initial reaction to an attack was to go and pray. He knew he was about to die. That's what he was thinking. He was thinking, I'm about to die. What am I going to do? If that was me, I don't know if prayer would be the first thing that I would do, but hopefully it would. But that's, it's very hard and we should try and be more like Daniel. Even though someone's not coming to physically kill us right now, there can be many forms um, there can be many ways that the enemy will come to try and attack us, like I said before. So we always have to remember whenever anxiety comes, whenever worry comes, whenever we're stressed out about something, our first reaction, our initial thing that we need to do is pray. It doesn't matter where you are, you can be on the bus, you can be on the train, just praying and communication with God. You don't have to be, <clears throat> wow, you don't have to be on the floor, um, on your knees in the house. Um, God, don't limit God to the four walls of your room or even the church and so yeah I think we should just be able to pray to God and talk to God and communicate with him whenever that type of attack comes to us and I just think it's so nice that this is the example that Daniel's teaching us as well let me continue reading verse 11 it says then the officials went together to Daniel's house and found him praying and asked God, God for God's help so they went straight to the king and reminded him about his law did you not sign a law for the next 30 days any person who prays to anyone divine or human except to you your majesty will throw will be thrown into the den of lions yes the king replied that decision stands and it is an official law of the medes and the persians that cannot be revoked then they told the king that man daniel one of the captives from judah is ignoring you in your law he still prays to his god three times a day so from this um I, f I found out actually in the message version, in the message version, uh, instead of officials, it says 
it, it reads the conspirators and conspirators means a plotter a schemer or a traitor um so that just shows you who these people were who they really truly were and then if we go down to verse 13 um i find it interesting that they describe daniel as one of the captives from judah and he was a captive that is very true however when he was now in Babylon, he was elevated so much. He was intelligent, he was wise, he was the one that was interpreting dreams, he was always on call. And I just found it funny because they're referring to him as someone who's a prisoner, someone who's caged, someone um, who's basically a convict, when in real life they're just envious of the position that he actually has. And this is what this is how the enemy will use some people. They'll they'll come to you and they'll treat you and they'll speak to you as if you're less than them. A convict is someone in the world that is less than someone else. So they will speak to you as if you're less than them. But it's not because they because you are less than them. It's because they fear you. They actually fear you. They are intimidated by you. They want to be like you. Um, but it's not by your own will. It's not by your own words, because of who Christ is within you. So let's continue reading from verse 14. So it says, Hearing this, the king was deeply troubled and he tried to think of a way to save Daniel. He spent the rest of the day looking for a way to get, to da to get Daniel out of this predicament. In the evening, the men went together to the king and said, Your majesty, you know that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no law that the king, that the king signs can be changed. So at last the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of lions. The king said to him, May your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. The king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seals of his nobles, so that no one could rescue Daniel. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. He refused his usual entertainment and couldn't sleep at all that night. Very early the next morning, the king got up and hurried out of the lion's den. When he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you serve so faithfully able to rescue you from the lions? This passage just shows us that the king actually had faith. The king had faith in the God that Daniel served, that Daniel would be saved. Um, and it just shows us that when we have so much faith in Christ, when we are obedient, when we show christ through our actions through our love other people also believe it's it's really not that difficult i feel like i almost feel like we actually don't need to shove god and christianity down people's throats the the love that we show the compassion that we show the obedience that we show is a form of christ within us and so the the king believed and if we go um down it also says that king darius fasted for daniel and when I searched for like a definition of fasting, it kind of gave me an example. It says, fasting is a temporary renunciation of something that is in itself good, like food, in order to intensify our expression for something greater, namely God and his work in our lives. So the king, he didn't listen to no music. He didn't have any food. He didn't have any entertainment. He didn't even sleep. Um, and this just shows how close him and Daniel were. He cared so much about Daniel. The relationship was, they had a bond so much um, and so deeply that he couldn't eat, he couldn't sleep, he couldn't, he couldn't do the things that he usually does. And it's just incredible to see how much of an effect Daniel had on him and how much of an effect we can really have on people. Not even, we may not even know it, um, but we can have such a great impact and great effect on people when we're doing what God tells us to do. So if we continue reading, from verse 21 it says Daniel answered long live the king my God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me for I have been found innocent in his sight and I have not wronged you your majesty the king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be lifted from the den not scratch was found on him for he had trusted his God so here we just see that God just shut the lion's mouths he just and threw away the key in psalms 104 verse 21 it says the lions roar for their prey and seek their food from god so they wait on god they listen to god animals god created animals right so they wait on god they they listen to him they're, they're even obedient to him and in that time daniel wasn't their food he wasn't their lunch that they were about to have and they just and that was it and 
it reminds me also of um, when Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were thrown into the fire and it says they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies nor was a hair off their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched and there was no smell of fire on them and the fact that Daniel came out with not a scratch from the lions reminds me of that and it just shows how how faithful God is and how just amazing guys imagine being in a cage with a lion <laughs> a lion is ready to eat whenever however they are the king of the jungle a king of the beast so it's just crazy how no not even crazy it's just amazing how God can make anything and everything obey him even the winds will be quiet <laughs> the mountains will bow down so it's just really amazing to see how far God will go and keep his promises to us in life and how faithful he is to us as well verse 24 says then the king gave orders to arrest the men who had maliciously accused daniel he had thrown them into the lion's den along with their wives and children the lions leaped on them and tore them apart even before they hit the floor of the dens this this part yeah this part it said i have to read it again it said he had thrown them into the lion's den along with their wives and children you know vengeance is the lord's Daniel, throughout this whole thing, Daniel didn't complain. Daniel didn't scream. He didn't scream at the people. He didn't say, I'm going to get you back. Vengeance is truly the Lord's. He didn't do anything. All he did was pray. All he did was pray. He prayed. He prayed for God to save him. He prayed. He prayed. He, th he, he thanked God for who he is. And God just came and said, listen, I'm going to take the people that came and accused you and I'm going to take them and put them in the place that they wanted to put you in. And he gathered his their wives and their family and their children together. So you have to be very, just like I said before, everyone's trying to be a Daniel. You have to really be obedient to God so that you don't fall in the same trap as these people. These people thought... These people just wanted to get to the top. Do you get I me? Mean? They just wanted to get to the top through their own desire, through their own will, through their own might. And we have to be so on top. We have to be in this 24 seven so that we don't slowly shift into being that type of person. And even when Daniel came out of the lines then, he came out praising and thanking God. He didn't come out and say, kill them men, get them men. They, they wrongfully accused me. He didn't say that. He thanked God for saving his life and this is what we should do when we're, when we're put in a position, um, it doesn't need to be something that we're accused of, but when we're just put in a position where we don't know if we're going to make it or not, and we make it by the grace of God, we come out and we praise God because we could have been someone else, we could have been something else, we could have been dead, we could have been sick, anything. And so it's always prayer and thanksgiving, that's what we, we should do. And I feel like Daniel... Um, really embodied that and he just shows that through his character so let me finish off the chapter and verse 25 says then king darius sent this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world peace and prosperity to you i decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the god of daniel for he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. And yeah, that's the end of the chapter, but it's just so amazing how King Darius claimed that you know god is the one that saves his people god is a living god and he will endure and reign forever and it was only because of daniel's actions it was only because of daniel's character so your actions and your character go a long way um it's not just for you this life christianity is not just it's not about you it's about others it's about showing people compassion it's about showing people love it's about being obedient to god's word and seeing how he will elevate you and seeing how he will take you out of positions that you have been put in um and just allowing god's will to be done in your life and not your own and your, not your own selfish desires because you will end up like the officials <laughs> you will end up like the officials so I would just like to leave you guys with my three main points that I got from this whole chapter. So the first one is don't fold under pressure. So to fold basically means you've given up, you're done. 
um, and when pressure comes your way, when, when stress and whatever life throws at you, do not fold. Always stay in your in your path, in the path that God has created you to walk in. Um, the second one is when things get tough, pray. So it's kind of similar, but our initial reaction, our first reaction to everything is prayer. If we get a text of, of something that's bad news, pray. If we get a call, pray. If we get results, pray. Don't let the enemy linger in your heart. Don't let anger linger in your heart. Don't let um, selfish desires, don't let envy, jealousy, none of it. Don't let it linger in your heart so that the enemy can make a way. Always pray. Let, let prayer be your initial reaction. And the last one is to never seek revenge. Um, Romans chapter 12 verse 19 says, Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. God will fight your battles for you. You don't need to fight your own battles. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to leave you guys with. Drop the mic. But let's pray and yeah, we'll be done for today. Okay, um, dear Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you that um, you were able to show me something in a completely different way that I had never seen before. Lord, I pray that this word... Um, just convicts the hearts of people watching. I pray that we're able to take this word and I pray that we're able to put it into our lives. I pray that we have a great week ahead of us, Lord. I pray that we're not selfish people. I pray that we're not envious or jealous, Lord, but I pray that we're able to have humility and just serve in the place that you want us. Um, I pray that we're able to showcase what Christ looks like on this earth, Lord. I pray that we're able to have compassion and love to people, Lord. And I just pray for obedience. I pray that we, I pray that we remain obedient in your word. I pray that we remain obedient within our actions, Lord, um, and not for the fact that you will elevate us in life, but just to be obedient to you, Lord. And the blessings shall follow, Lord. I just thank you for this time that we're able to have, and I just thank you for everyone that is watching this, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So thank you guys for listening and I hope you liked the word. If you want to read more of Daniel, I would suggest it because he's just a great example in the Bible. But yeah, have a great week guys and see you all soon.